Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. I'm Bob Polensky, Master of Wine. Today's topic is around one of the world's greatest wine regions, but I'm gonna venture to guess for a good number of you, this is not a region that immediately comes to mind. I'm talking about McLaren Vale in South Australia. It's about a 45 minute drive outside of Adelaide. This video will focus on a brief history of the Australian wine business, along with a bit of a deeper dive into McLaren Vale itself, and then it will conclude with a tasting of three iconic wines from one of the top wineries of the region, Wera Wera. Australia has a wine history that goes back about 200 years, but it wasn't until the 1980s when Australia made a strong presence on the export markets. Places like the UK, Canada, the US all embraced Australian wine during that time. And if you were around back then, you think back to the 1980s, you couldn't flip on the radio without hearing another tune from Men at Work. All the Crocodile Dundee movies were the rage. And even going into the 2000s, you had the Sydney Olympics. It seemed like Australia was just top of mind for about 20 years. Back then in the US, brands like Lindemann, Rosemont were absolutely everywhere. Grocery stores had large sections of Australian-only wine, oftentimes 20, 24 feet. Many of the wines, the vast majority that is, was controlled by just a handful of companies. And many of the brands were based on high volume and low cost. You fast forward into the 2000s and everything started to change. It was a model that was just built to burst. There were new competitors coming on the scene and the economics of shipping wine halfway around the world for, for cheap prices just did not work in the long term. Over the last several years, there's been a transformation within the Australian wine business. Those days of commodity brands are fading, and now there's a focus on wines that have a story, a sense of place, and a sense of authenticity. In 2017 and 2018, I lived in Melbourne in Victoria, and the job I had there allowed me to travel around the country quite extensively. During that two-year period, I visited most of the Australian wine regions. Certainly places like Barossa and Coonawarra get a lot of play as a, as a premium uh, wine regions within the country and on an international stage. I think McLaren Vale sometimes gets sold a bit short, especially on the international stage. When I visited there, I was so impressed by many factors. One is it has perhaps the most diverse soil structure of any wine region in the world. The other is the climactic conditions there are ideal for the production of red wine, especially Shiraz and Cabernet Sauvignon. Next is the amount of very old vines really surprised me. You get these old vines, and I'm talking vines that are 40, 50 years old and older, they tend to produce smaller berries, smaller crop, but with a lot of character, a lot of intensity. And lastly, the number of quality-minded wine producers in that area just blew my mind. Everyone seems to be focused on quality. Well, enough for the background story. Let's get to the tasting itself. There are three wines that'll be tasted here, all from the same property, from Wira Wira, which is one of the most iconic and oldest wineries within the entire country of Australia. And it's one of those benchmark producers from McLaren Vale. Their wines are sold in many places around the world. You can find them in much of Southeast Asia. They're sold in Japan, South Korea, Canada, Europe. In the US, it's a bit hit and miss at the present time. That's going to change. So I'm going to list a number of other producers in the description. So if you cannot find Wira Wira, you're going to have some other options as well. The first wine to be tried is the Catapult Shiraz. This is a 2021 vintage. Now this particular wine actually has a bit of a sentimental value to me. When I lived in Australia, this was the first wine that I ever purchased from a shop in Australia. And as is expected with this wine, and I've had this wine in many vintages and it is very consistent. Color is very deep. It extends right to the rim of the glass. The core is, is almost opaque, and there's very little fade as you get out to the rim of the glass. Good intensity. It has that red berry fruit character. There's a bit of oak, uh, a little savory spice note. 
Uh, this one smells a bit like coffee as well. It, it's robust, it's dense, it's really full. There's a lot going on in this wine. This wine generally is in that $25 range or so. That's US dollars. Of course, the prices will vary uh, tremendously from market to market, but that gives you some indication of where the price would come in. On the palate, it's a gem. It's ripe, rich, full. There's a lot of presence on the front, mid, and back palate. Tannins are very soft. The structure is, is quite big and bold. The alcohol content on this wine is 14.5. And what that's saying is you're getting fruit that is very ripe. So it, it has a lot of that intensity to it, but even with a 14.5 alcohol level, there's no sign of heat. The wine is very much in balance. It's got that round, rich character to it. This is an extremely well-made wine. The next wine is the Wira Wira Woodhenge Shiraz. This is the 2021 vintage. Now this wine is coming from older vineyard sites. It's also spending uh, more time in oak. Uh, the back label indicates uh, 40% new oak, uh, both a combination of French and American, aged for 18 months. And I'd be curious to know what you think about screw caps, especially for more premium wines. I'm a big fan. When I lived in Australia, I was surprised. The first store that I went into uh, was a, a Dan Murphy's, which is one of the nicer wine shops in Australia. It's a larger chain. I would say 99% of the wines that were Australian were under screw cap. It didn't matter if they were entry price point or ultra premium. Everything was under screw cap. So it, it's a country that, that's really embraced it. Both Australia and New Zealand were the driving force behind getting the screw cap to be much more commonplace in, in the wine world. Now back to this wine, uh, color, very, very deep. Again, the color extends right to the rim of the glass. Uh, looking down into it, it's not quite opaque, but there is a lot of color density with this wine. Aromatics, very good intensity. There's, uh, it has that ripe red fruit, a little bit of that savory spice, a slight uh, cracked peppery note. Really beautiful aromatics on this wine. Not all that different than the previous wine, except for the fact that this has a little more intensity to it, and you do get some of that smoky oak character, which is not nearly as pronounced in the Catapult. Oh, this wine has a lot of volume to it. It's good intensity, it's ripe, rich, dense, a little spicy. Uh, it's got a very broad range of character to it. Very long on the finish. And even though on the back label, it makes this claim that this wine can be cellared for up to 20 years, well, it certainly has the structure for cellaring. But the tannins in this wine are very soft. The wood is extremely well integrated into this wine. And it's sometimes the case with, with cheap wine, with wines where oak is brought in in a crude method, uh, like oak chips, for instance, or even cruder methods like oak extract. With those types of wines, oftentimes the oak character feels a little disjointed. It's not really integrated into the wine. In this case, the oak is present, but it's seamlessly smooth as it's part of the, the integration into the wine itself. Really well done. Magnificent bottle. Uh, according to their website, this wine is $40 Australian. That's through the winery itself. And now off to the third and final wine. This is the RSW McLaren Vale Shiraz 2019. Uh, what the letters indicate, it's Robert Strangway Wigley, who established Wira Wira back in 1894. This is the top bottling from Wira Wira for their Shiraz. This is very selected sites, old vineyards. This gets all the bling bling treatment. And I love it. Their premium wine, which this one sells for about $75, according to their website. I love it that it has a screw cap. Color on this wine, you can see just how dense that is. Uh, it's almost opaque, and it extends right to the rim of the glass. 
Yeah, there's absolutely no browning, no amber tone at the rim. So this has all the indication of a wine that's very youthful. Aromatics are wonderful on this wine. It's, it's very ripe, very dense, good intensity to it. You definitely do get a good hint of oak, but there's this underlying smoky spice character, red fruit. It smells almost a little bit like, like charcuterie. It has that, that aged meat characteristic to it. it. may sound a little bit funky, but it's actually quite cool. Similar characteristic with all three of these wines. They're seamlessly smooth, very well made. This one certainly has a lot of structure to it. Uh, back label again shows 14.5. All three of these have had the same alcohol level. But the fruit is ripe, it's dense. Uh, there's a lot of vo volume on the palate. It's really weighty and it extends very much to the back palate. Beautiful, beautiful bottle of wine. I'm curious to see how this, gonna, this is going to develop with some time. Today's tasting has been a real treat. Absolutely love this entire range. When I lived in Australia, I drank Shiraz more than anything else. It's what the Australians drink more than anything else as well. And why wouldn't you? There are so many incredible versions of it out there. It's unfortunate that in some places of the world, what you're seeing are, are the low-end Planck wines that are really not a good representation of what Shiraz can be. But if you search out some of the specific areas that shine, and certainly McLaren Vale is one of them, you'll get the impression of what Shiraz can be at its absolute pinnacle. Absolutely love these wines. Thank you so much for staying to the end of this video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And until next time, I'll see you somewhere out in the wine world. Cheers.